What's up guys? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and today we're replacing an alternator on a Porsche 914. Alright, here's what we need to get started. You're going to need a way to take the wheels off. You will need some either Allen keys or Allen sockets. These are awesome. You're going to need a voltmeter to make sure that it is charging when you're done. Metric sockets. I've got uh, three eighths here. We'll get some quarter inch ones if we need it. A couple of screwdrivers. A replacement alternator. This came out of my parts car and I know it's good. I've actually tested it. Some light uh, and you're going to jack up your car and get to it. So the alternator is a little bit hidden on these cars, uh, but you have to work a little bit from the top, a little bit from the bottom. Auto Atlanta or Pelican parts call for five to six hours. I'm pretty sure we can do it in 90 minutes or less. So we're gonna put ourselves on the clock and get to it. All right, we are on the driver's side of the 74 two liter 914. The alternator is, you can see just see the corner of it right there. So there are usually two plastic plugs, one here and one on the front that'll need to come out. We'll need to take this heater hose connection off, the alternator plug out of our relay board and we'll need to take this grommet out. Uh, if you're replacing your alternator harness, which is actually not a bad idea to do, it goes back towards the starter and you'll need to pull that out from there as well. So eventually we're gonna be taking this piece of the 10 off. So this car's already got Allen bolts, which is an excellent upgrade. I highly recommend you do that. Uh, so we'll take out what we can from the top and then get into beneath the car before we jack it up. We are under the 914. You can see the little valve for your heat. The alternator is way up here. So we're gonna take this off. Uh, we're gonna take off a couple of the pieces of the heat exchangers. Thankfully, again, this car already has Allen keys on it. Um, so I like to jack up right here on the engine bar. Could go a lot higher, but uh, this is really all you need for a job like this. <laughs> Awesome. Now we have most of our heat exchanger system out of the way. Basically everything but the exchanger itself needs to come off because there is your alternator. You've got a pivot bolt on the bottom there, but this is what we're trying to get out here is this front piece of 10. And you can see I've taken several of the bolts out from the top, but there is one way up here. I'll get some light and show you guys that. And once we get that piece of 10 out, I can show you where those connections are. <laughs> So we got this piece of 10 off and there's really no way to get it off other than to wrestle it. Two connections here, one way, way up there. And you just have to wrestle it out. Uh, you can make sure that you get this cooling duct out of the back. Just kind of pull it out of the uh, fan housing here. We've removed the top pivot bolt. I've removed the fan from the front and we're gonna remove that 13 mil nut right there. Once that's off, we can lower it, pull this back cover and start changing out the wiring. All right, I got that nut loose. Let's see if we can wrestle the alternator out. Make sure that you push that bolt to the front and you catch it. I'm catching it right here with my fingers. And remember that there is a piece of 10 covering the front of the alternator that may come out as well. Here's that pivot bolt. Here's that piece of 10. And we're gonna see if we can just gently rock this alternator down around the 10 work and low enough. There we go. Now I have not undone the electrical connections at the back. Um, if you were really uh, doing this job the easy or slow way or you had a lift you could pull this harness all the way out but honestly i've pulled the harness down through to where i am and uh, i can set the engine uh alternator on the engine bar and we can undo this back cover and take care of that so engine halt harness is out we'll pop this cover and show you what's inside 
Welcome to the inside of the 914 alternator. So uh, once you get those three eight mil uh, cover bolts off, it's actually super easy. There's one big stud and then there is one plug. Uh, I believe that stud is a 10 or a 13, like pretty much everything else on this car. So uh, for this job, I'm actually just gonna pull the plug and the stud. I'm not gonna pull it through the boot. I'm gonna leave the wiring hanging. We'll bring the new one up, slap it in place. Uh, it has been about 20 minutes since we started. So uh, the reverse is gonna take a little bit longer, but I think we're gonna be well under an hour. All right, old alternator, new alternator. It's important to make sure that these are the same. Uh, pulleys look the same. You can hear a squeaky bearing in that old one. That's probably where it failed. Mounting ears all look good. Uh, they both appear to have you stamped Bosch rebuilt. This one has got, to, in my opinion, what looks like a part store rebuild stamp. This one uh, that is the one we're putting in has a uh, Bosch reman stamp that looks a little bit different. I don't know, it looks a little older to me. Um, but I'm just making sure that battery positive stud, this one has grease or something on it. I don't really know what. Um, some dielectric on the three plugs. But everything looks the same here. We'll pull these three little eight mil nuts off here so it's easy. Slide this under there. One stud here, one plug there. Dielectric grease, back cover on, and then put it back together. It just takes a little time and patience and a little bit of a long screwdriver. Get in there, make sure that it's pretty free and has some movement so that uh, your airflow is not restricted. We got that bottom, bottom bolt tight. I actually might go ahead and put in that top pivot bolt while I'm down here and I can see both sides of it. And then we'll go up to tires and tighten the belt, get it kind of where we want it. And then we'll pop that 10 back in. There is one 10 bolt from the bottom that we got to do. And then we'll start reassembling uh, 10 from the top and heater core from the bottom, heater exchanger stuff from the bottom. So it just takes some wrestling, but uh, really it takes two people to get this 10 in. You need to be above he here, inside of this front shield case, and below that piece that crosses the engine. So you have a 10 bolt there, there, then you have two from the top, and then there's a couple others that we took off just to access it. So we're gonna start popping the heater setup back together, and then we'll go to the top, put the belt on, and check the voltage. So we have our 10 back in. There are several pieces you have to deal with. This is the first piece. There are two bolts here and two bolts at the other end. These both have straps across the top. Next, put in the J pipe that goes up to provide the heat. I recommend you put the pipe in loosely, secure the bolt from the top, and then do the one from the bottom. And last, you'll do your piece with one bolt here and one bolt on the top that comes over to your heater valve. Now, this car is gonna be getting some new heater valve hoses soon, so we're gonna get this back as connected as we can. It's a little long, so I may actually trim it so it uh, gives a little bit better. We'll put that pinch bolt in, and we will be able to have heat as much as we need it, or defrost down here in Florida, more likely. All right, so we did go ahead and take the belt off. This belt actually appears to be in totally serviceable shape, so you can't actually change these belts from the top the reach in, get it around your fan. Just kind of takes a little bit of practice feeling to make sure that you know and understand what that feels like. And once it's around the fan, nice and tight into the housing there, we'll run it over to the alternator and hook it up. So attention to the alternator is just a by hand kind of a situation. I uh, tend to get it on one side of the pulley, go ahead and twist it. I've got it on the fan partially, and I'm going to twist the alternator pulley until it pops in the groove, and then I'll make sure that it spins freely 
on both sides. Yep, I can see, I can feel that it's in the groove. I can spin the alternator and tell that it's right. And then I'm just gonna pull the alternator to the passenger side and down. You may end up needing something to pry on it just a little bit and I'm gonna get that belt tight. I guess technically they say an inch over 12 for tension, but I just get it as kind of snug. It's not doing a huge amount of work. It's not a super amp draw car. Even with a car like this with fuel injection, I can kind of push down on that with a screwdriver. Check, feel like that's not quite there, but it just takes a 13 mil ratchet and we'll go ahead and tighten up that pinch bolt just a little bit so it'll hold our tension. Now, this car, we did go ahead and loosen the fan. So just to have a little bit easier access here. And so we're gonna push that alternator down and make sure that tension on the fan feels good. It's a little loose, so we'll loosen that pinch bolt and just kind of repeat that process until it's settled. So we're gonna finish that up off camera and then we'll start the car and check the voltage. All right, ready? All right, this is the moment of truth. We're gonna find out if we got it charging. We've already checked the voltage regulator, so we're pretty confident that's good. Ready? Ready? Give it some reps, a little bit. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for the alternator replacement in the Barefoot Garage. As you can see, we have some other problems going on with that LE car, and we're gonna have to dive into that. If you just need to replace your alternator or that is actually a problem, follow those step-by-steps. It's really not too bad a job. I think we came in right around 90 minutes, 75 minutes, and that's with two people. You definitely need two people, one to do that upper and one to do that lower when you're trying to get that engine 10 corner back in place. It is a tough piece to do. So as always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage here on YouTube and at Barefoot Garage Jacks on Instagram. See ya.